In this video, we want to talk about the case of uh, non-integer sampling rate conversion. So what do we mean by that? Let's assume you are given a sequence Xn, which is obtained by sampling a signal. And what if we want is a new sequence Xrn, which is equal to, let's say, X of n 2.1t. Now, this is called non-integer sampling rate conversion. Or, so this is the case where we are reducing the sampling rate. We can also increase the sampling rate. So, so the other case could be r equal to n t divided by 2.1. So we want to actually increase the sampling rate. Now, what we have covered so far, we cannot do that. Why? Well, something like this, let's say down sampling, something like this 2.1 xn xrn, this makes no sense. Why does it not make any sense? Because we are talking about a down sampling operation downsampling means for example when we downsample by an integer keep a sample throw away that integer minus one well we keep one sample and then throw away 1.1 samples that does not have any mathematical meaning because we are in the discrete world similarly something like this makes no sense either we cannot expand a sequence we cannot expand a sequence by a non-integer factor. We can't say take a sample and another sample and insert perhaps 1.1 zeros in between. That does not work. So then how do we accomplish a non-integer sampling rate? Well, to do that is that we put interpolation and decimation and decimation blocks in cascade. Okay, that's how we do that. Okay, so if our new sampling rate, so how do we put that? We will use those blocks such that L over MT is our new sampling rate. So when we put them in cascade, our new sampling rate will be L over MT. So if L, if L is smaller than a, M, then this means that we are decreasing the sampling rate And if L is greater than M, then this means that we are increasing the sampling rate. So for example, if we want to increase by a factor of, if we want to increase by a factor of 2.1, then we pick values of L and M. There is no unique value we can pick any factor that gives us 2.1. Now, of course, th what that means is that conversion can only happen by rational factors. Okay. Because the conversion is by L over M, so I cannot say give me a sampling rate change by a factor of, for example, square root of two because square root of two cannot be represented as a fraction of two integers. So this is the setup. Now, how does it look like in a block diagram? What we get is we have X of N. We upsample it by a factor of L first 
and then we complete our interpolation so we have a low pass filter with cutoff of pi over l and gain of l and then we have our decimator so we get x e of n expanded sequence then we get x i of n now after that we should have a low pass filter to avoid any aliasing effect so we'll have a low pass filter with a cutoff of pi over m and gain equal to 1 and then we down sample it by a factor of m and we get xr of n and if there is no aliasing in this block so if there is no aliasing now that can happen in two cases either because we are increasing the sampling rate if we increase the sampling rate then there will never be aliasing so if when we sample there was no aliasing and we increase the sampling rate there can never be aliasing or the other part was that x of t was originally band limited to L pi over MT okay. so you so one of the two cases if that is these two cases hold then we are guaranteed that XR of N the new sequence that we obtain will actually be correspond to samples of your continuous time signal x of t with a sampling period of mt over l so if your original sampling period was t then your sampling period has been changed by a factor of m over l okay so under these two conditions if it does not happen then you have still changed the sampling rate if the aliasing for example happens then you have still change the sampling rate but those new samples would not necessarily correspond would not correspond to the samples of your original signal they would rather correspond to the samples of a low pass filter version it would be as if you first did an anti-aliasing filter in continuous domain and then sample those signal then sample the resulting signal okay so this is the general block diagram for non-integer sampling rate changes now we can actually simplify that further let's look at these two low pass filters so one low pass filter is due to interpolation that low pass filter has a cutoff of pi over l and the gain is l so this is due to so so due to upsampling operation and due to downsampling we get another low pass filter which has a cutoff of pi over m and gain of 1 but both of these both of these low pass filters are in cascade now when two filters are in cascade they can be turned into an, a new filter whose Fourier transform is simply multiples of the two. So if we multiply the two, we see that cascade of two low pass filters is equal to a low pass filter. If I multiply the two, I get another low pass filter. And if I have a low pass filter with, so 
low pass filter 1 has cut off omega c1 and low pass filter 2 has cut off omega c2 then their cascade will have cut off so what will be the cutoff it will be the smallest of the two cutoff frequencies so the cutoff will be minimum of omega c1 and omega c2 now what will be the gain the gain will be the multiple of the two so the gain in this case is l and one so we can replace we can replace this by by a single low pass filter with gain equals L now what will be the cutoff the cutoff will be the smallest of pi over M and pi over L or in other words it will be the smallest of uh, it will be pi divided by whatever is maximum is m maximum or l maximum because if m is bigger then pi over m will be smaller than pi over l so what we get out is that actually to do non-integer rate sampling conversion we do a low a an up sampling operation and then we do a low pass filter with omega c equal to pi divided by max of l and m and the gain of this will be equal to l and after that we downsample it by m to get xrn so these three blocks basically help you do sampling rate change as we talked about earlier if L so the sampling rate the, the sampling rate is changed by L over M if L is less than M then we are decreasing the sampling rate if L is bigger than M then we are increasing the sampling rate the new sampling rate is L over M times the old sampling rate so fs2 is l over m times fs1 okay we are almost done with discussion of non-integer sampling the only part that we are left with is can we do low uh, can we do down sampling first and then do up sampling are the two equivalent right now what we are saying is do up sampling then do low pass filtering and then do down sampling can we do the other way around and the answer to that is no you should not do that for example what can happen is let's say that the sampling rate factor so what you, you wanted m over l to be equal to 2.1 now that can be accomplished by making m equal to 21 and l equal to 10 so we want a sampling rate reduction by a factor of 2.1 if I did actually down sampling first then so if we downsample first by a factor of 21 this means that x of n should be band limited to pi over 21 otherwise you would have aliasing now I could have actually picked m to be 210 so 
Another thing that works is m equal to 210 and l equal to 100. Now I would have wanted it to be band limited to pi over 210. So that is basically going to put more and more stringent conditions and it would turn out that if you put down sampling first, aliasing becomes an issue. So you should actually never, for sampling rate change, you should never actually put down sampling part first. The block diagram is always given by this version. You take your sequence, whether you are doing up sampling or down sampling, doesn't matter. Take your sequence first, of course, you find out the ratio that you want. Based upon that, figure out the values of M and L. Then do upsampling by a factor of L. Do a low pass filtering with a gain of L. Cut off of pi over whatever is maximum L or M. Then do a downsampling. And that is how you will end up with a sequence whose sampling rate has been appropriately changed by a non-integer factor. So never do down sampling first and then do up sampling. It's always up sampling first, low pass filter, down sampling.